Hey YouTube, this is Marcus or Garwin again with another video. This video we're going to talk about emulating the PlayStation 1. Uh, the PlayStation 1 was one of my favorite consoles of all time. I had a lot of fun with uh, games like The Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver, Final Fantasy VIII, Legend of Dragoon, things of that nature. So we're going to talk about emulating the PlayStation 1 today. This video in particular is going to talk about a piece of software called PSX. Now, full disclaimer before we get going. Downloading the PlayStation 1 system BIOS or games from any third party uh, source is illegal. In order to do this in the legal clear, you need to use, you need to dump your own BIOS from a PlayStation 1 console that you own. And there are ways to do that here. I'll show you on, uh, I found a topic on ngemu.com. I just wanted to take a few minutes to record a quick caveat to this video. Number one, I am planning on eventually doing a video on how to dump the BIOS in your consoles. Uh, I've, I've done it before, I just I didn't bother recording it at the time that I did it. And so, in addition to this video showing you how to set up the emulator, I am planning on eventually doing another video where I actually show you how to dump the BIOS from your real console so that you can use that BIOS with these emulators. The other thing I wanted to point out was that PSX does work perfectly in Wine on Linux. In fact, that's the way I used it for years because I was not happy with the the subpar uh, audio performance that PCSXR gave me on Linux. So if you are using Linux and you want to emulate PlayStation games accurately, PSX is still a valid option. Uh, the Linux version of PSX, however, is not that great because it was built uh, to depend on libraries Lord, a decade or more old, and so you, it's actually much easier to just use Wine and run the Windows version of PSX on your Linux box uh, if you want to use PSX to emulate your PlayStation 1 game. So uh, I just wanted to point those a uh, couple of things out real quick before we move on with the rest of the video. That tells you how to uh, dump the BIOS from a PlayStation 1 console, and you also need to either use discs of games that you actually personally own or digital images of those discs that you have made yourself. Uh, the end result is that downloading them from third parties is illegal. So, let's get going. I settled on PSX because it seems to be the most accurate uh, and the most reliable PlayStation 1 emulator. There's another emulator out there called PCSXR that is also very good. It has an OpenGL plugin that, let, that will uh, allow you to do certain things like smooth out textures and all kinds of fancy stuff where you can't really re-engineer the game but it can help and make it look better than it did playing on an actual PlayStation 1 console. Uh, PCSXR though I had a couple of problems. For one it does not particularly like me using an actual PlayStation 3 controller and what I think is happening is this one is a 6 axis which means it's got motion controls built in and I think it's picking up the 6-axis as input uh, because I, I'm unable to configure it. Every time I would try to configure it, it would pick up input from this controller even though I wasn't pressing anything. And PSX does not seem to care about the 6-axis input from this controller. So I can actually configure the controller that I want to use and use an official Sony PlayStation controller on my PlayStation games. Uh, the other issue I had was that there's some kind of a bug with PCSXR that I have seen acknowledged in forum posts uh, with XA Audio, and that, what that is, it's in some games like I think Tony Hawk Pro Skater and Need for Speed 3, Hot Pursuit, and games like that, where what it would do is it would load the game into RAM, and then while you were playing the game, it would actually be playing the background music itself from actual conventional audio tracks on the CD-ROM itself so that the music was being read from the disc in real time instead of it being loaded in a compressed form into RAM. And there's some sort of a bug with PCSXR and that XA audio where sometimes you'll get pops and glitches and it, it just doesn't sound right. And PSX to me seems to be the most reliable. Uh, now another advantage to PCSXR is that it does also include a simulated PlayStation 1 BIOS that you can use that actually has some advantages that we'll talk about a little bit later uh, or you can choose to use an actual PlayStation 1 BIOS so anyway uh, now that we've gotten why I have settled on PSX out of the way we'll go over it 
and I'll show you guys how to use it. Now PSX is out of uh, development. As far as I can tell, it is, has not been touched in years. The website that I originally downloaded it from is gone, and the only place I can still find it uh, that I remotely trust is emulator-zone.com. It has version 1.13, which is the same version that I got from their website years back. But anyway, you download it and then extract it, and you will have uh, this folder, PSX underscore version number. So you open that, and now before the emulator will even run, you need to have your BIOS file. Remember we talked about dumping your own BIOS file from your PlayStation 1 console? You need to dump that and, it, and then rename it so that it looks like this. It'll be SCPH and then the version number of your console dot bin. Uh, you can go into cards. That's where your memory cards are going to be stored. You don't have to make these with anything special. Just put an empty text file in there with the extension dot MCR or whatever. And then we'll configure PSX in a moment to look at that card and uh, the games will format it for you the first time you launch a launch a game and uh, and once that's done uh, you can put your Im your games in CD images here and uh, and then just run the PSX fin executable you can also place a shortcut to it on your desktop here now uh, we're going to go to File, Configuration, we're going to go to Graphics, and you want to make sure that the resolutions are set the way you want to set them. If you're using a 4K monitor, you're going to make sure that these resolutions are set to the actual resolution and refresh rate that you want them to run at. Uh, so we're going to do 1080p60 since that's the type of display that I'm using. I want V-Sync so I don't get tearing. I'm just going to leave these options the way they are right now. Uh, you can even set it so that it pauses the emulation when the window is not focused so that if you click outside your emulator window to check a Facebook message or whatever the whole emulator freezes so that stuff doesn't happen while you're not there so that you can in effect pause games that don't have a built-in pause function. Uh, we can go to memory cards here and you can select the card file that we created in the card subfolder you can go to BIOS here and make sure that it is pointing to the BIOS file that you have in there. Don't worry about the PlayStation 2 BIOS. The development stopped and they never added PlayStation 2 support. Um, paths is just where it's going to look by default for certain things. Um, let's go to sound. I just leave it alone at default. Uh, where are we at? Controllers. Now you can see here it picks up the wireless controller for PlayStation 3. Uh, I've got it set as a dual shock, and then basically what you do is uh, you click on, say, this first one, and then whenever you press an input button on this controller, it'll automatically go down to the next one. So we'll just go up, left, down, right, triangle, square, X, circle, start, select, wow. and we're configured. Now, PSX supports, uh, oh, before we continue, now, in order for PSX to pick up your controller, it needs to be connected to your PC before you start PSX. So if you start PSX and then plug in a controller, it's not going to show up and let you configure it. So make sure you have your controllers connected before you launch the emulator. So, PSX supports running games in two different ways. You can either run the game from an actual physical you know, PlayStation disc, or you can use a digital image that you've made of that disc. Uh, so let's go ahead and demonstrate real quick. We're going to launch Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver here. And we'll give it a chance to uh, spin the disc up. And it'll probably show us the files that are on the disc in a moment here. Alrighty. We're going to say File, Insert CD Drive. And we'll select the drive and hit OK. And there is, I'm going to skip the, the opening cutscenes here. And here is Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver on the PlayStation. Now you can full screen it with Alt and Enter. I don't know if this is going to pick up on the screen cap, but we'll see. So you can full screen it 
or you can maximize the window. However, if you just maximize the window, it stretches the image. So uh, you can see here it, it has stretched a 4 to 3 ratio image to 16 by 9, or actually a little bit steeper than that, counting the window borders and stuff. So things will look a little bit squashed, but if you're okay with that, that's an option as well. Um, so let's go ahead and show you how the quick saves work real quick. If you click on quick save, you can see we have uh, hotkeys set to those. So uh, they're basically save states, so that you can save your game even when there's not a save point built into the game. So if you're in the middle of a really big boss fight, say in Final Fantasy, and something happens and you've got to get up and go right now, and it's final, say it's Final Fantasy VIII where it's ATB based, you can just save the game right where you're at, shut your whole thing down and go and come back and just reload it to that exact moment in the game. So let's say we want to quick save right here. We'll hit F6. And then if we reset the game, now the save states, there we go. F1 restored us directly to here, skip the BIOS and everything. So that's kind of cool. Now the other way it supports loading games is with the actual digital images that you have of those games. So let's get Soul Reaver out of the disk drive here. And we'll relaunch the emulator. Insert CD image. Go, okay, so Legend of the Dragoon, patched, disk one. And this is a bin file. And here's a Legend of Dragoon playing from the local hard drive from a bin image file that I made of the actual disks. Now, this brings me to another topic, compatibility. Um, we'll say eject CD, reset. Legend of Dragoon is one of two games that I have had issues with regarding this emulator. Uh, the first game is Nuclear Strike, which actually is kind of sad because that was actually a really cool, fun little sort of isometric helicopter shoot 'em up game. But that game doesn't work on my PlayStation 3, doesn't work on my PlayStation 2. If I take the physical Nuclear Strike disc and put it in a PlayStation console other than the actual PlayStation 1, the game does not work. It also does not work on the PSX emulator. There's just something about that game that doesn't like anything but the actual real hardware. The other game that I have had issues with is Legend of Dragoon. Now I have heard that this issue affects more than just this game, but basically there is some copy protection on at least the NTSC slash US version of the game, so that if you try to launch uh, the game from either a disc or, let me show you here, we've got an unpatched copy of the disc uh, here's what you'll get. Any deck. There we go. There. So that's what you get. So basically what seems to be happening is that because you're using an actual PlayStation 1 BIOS uh, and my optical drive does not support reading the special subcode for copy protection that is on these discs, the PlayStation 1 BIOS, which is functioning properly, thinks that you have modded your console and you're trying to play a burned copy of the game, which I guess technically you are, but it doesn't, it, it even does it if you're still using the physical disc in your optical drive, because your op, uh, my PC optical drive, and most of them from what I understand, can't read the special subcode that's on these discs that is the copy protection. So, I managed to get mine working by patching the images. I found an old 16-bit DOS utility that I had to use DOSBox to run and I patched the images that I made of this game so that I can still legally play this game because I made the images of this disc but I had to patch them in order for them to function properly. So you can see let's insert CD image. We'll go back here and go into the patched folder disc 1. Reset the emulator. And it'll drop out here for just a second. Now 
Now we got this far before. And now the game boots properly. The images are almost identical. If you look at them in Windows Explorer, they show up as the same file size and everything. The only difference is that this copy of the image uh, has been patched uh, to get rid of that copy protection. But that is the two issues that I have had. And the copy protection issue, as far as I'm aware, does affect more than just Legend of Dragoon. So you may have to put a little bit of work into getting this game to run if you use PSX. Whereas if you use PCSXR, um, the simulated BIOS, not the PlayStation 1 BIOS, but if you use the built-in simulated BIOS, it actually just circumvents that copy pr uh, protection altogether. So you can use your physical disks or just regular old ISO or bin images that you've made and not have to patch them to get them to function. But I wanted this, I wanted the images that I had made to run on PSX because I've, I've had a better experience with PSX uh, in playing my games. So, that is PSX version 1.2. 1.3, the PlayStation 1 emulator. We talked about installing it. Well, actually, there is no installation. You just extract an archive. Uh, but configuring it, setting it up, loading games, and the issues that uh, still exist as a result of it being an emulator. But 99% of the games work flawlessly. I can use my DualShock 3 controller. I don't have any issues with the XA audio uh, popping or, or having problems like that so I'm I'm particularly happy with PSX so I just wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how to set up this very good in my opinion PlayStation 1 emulator and play your games on your PC because at this point in the game the PlayStation 4 is the latest generation of the PlayStation family but it is not backwards compatible with any of the older generations of consoles. So it's going to be the first PlayStation console in a very long time that can't play PlayStation 1 games. Your PS1, your PS2, your PS3, they can all play PS1 games. And the PS3 even supports making virtual memory cards. And I've got a little USB adapter that I bought from Sony that lets me use my PlayStation 1 or 2 memory cards on my PS3 to make backups and things of that nature. But even the PS3 is out of production. And so, right now, the only hardware that you can use from Sony to play PlayStation 1 games is hardware that's out of production everywhere in the world. Most of it's out of warranty. And, you know, so we need a way to keep these games alive and play them at any time that we want to play them in the future because we paid for them. You know, I paid for this game. And if 15 years from now, if I want to sit down and play this game, I don't want to have to worry about the fact that, oh snap, my P the capacitors in my PS3 have dried out and it doesn't work anymore. I want to be able to just load up that disc or the image that I made on my PC and play my game with whatever controller I want to play it with, with you know save states and things of that nature. So that's why I'm a big proponent of emulation uh, overall, as long as you're doing it legally, because I am not a proponent of piracy. I think if you make a good product, you're entitled to get paid. But I also believe that if you pay for something, you own it, and it's yours, and you should be able to do whatever you want with it as long as you're not helping other people pirate and steal copies of your product. So, uh, anyway, that's why I'm a proponent of emulation. That's why I like playing my games on my PC, because I don't have to worry about scratching my discs or messing with old, out-of-date, out-of-warranty hardware or anything like that. So, uh, Hopefully you guys have found this video helpful and informative. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions, please feel free to post them in the comment section below. And as always, this is Marcus out. Y'all have a good one.